All right, welcome to Physics 111, Introduction to Engineering Physics. Uh, my name is Dr. David Rossmanith, and I will be the professor for this class. Um, first of all, this is an online section, fully online, so uh, any office hours or things like that will be held uh, via Zoom. So if, for whatever reason, you need to uh, meet with me um, regarding the class or anything associated with the class or anything like that, um, you're free to do so. I don't have any specific office hours since this is an online section. So the way we'll handle it is um, by appointment. So if you need to meet with me um, or talk with me in person or anything like that, we can do it by Zoom. And so just email me and we'll come up with a day and a time that's suitable for both of us and we'll log into Zoom and, uh, and go from there. My email address is D-R-O-S-S-M-A-N-I-T-H -S -S at dillard.edu. And so you can contact me there um, most often. Um, I have found that sometimes if you try to send me an email through my DU, it doesn't always reach me. I have no idea why. But if you try to contact me through Canvas or by a direct email with this email address, that works perfectly well. So, uh, let's talk about the class. Um, first of all, this class is going to be uh, a good overview of the general principles of physics. I found that um, not everybody takes physics in high school, so not everybody has experience with what physics is all about, how to go about studying physics, and things like this. So uh, I felt it best to uh, take this first course and give you a wide overview about all of the big topics of physics you will be learning soon in general physics and so on. And also to try to help you understand the best way to study physics because it turns out different topics uh, biology, chemistry, math, English, history you cannot study all of them the same way and be successful. Uh, personally I started as a biology major when I was in college. Uh, I was going to be a medical doctor and so I took three years of biology. Um, I wound up getting sick, uh, and because of that, I could not continue a career in medicine, and so I wound up switching into physics. And because of this, uh, I see, or I was able to see, a big difference between how people generally are able to study biology and how people are able to study physics. Uh, what I found was in biology there was a lot of reading the chapters, making flashcards, memorizing definitions, and uh, basically a, a good amount of memorization. Uh, in physics, however, memorization will not help you. You're not going to be able to sit down with flashcards study definitions and just be able to solve any physics problem because you memorize things. Um, yes, there is a lot of memorization in terms of the formulas and equations of physics. However, I don't think there's any reason why anybody should be forced to memorize every physics equation. So what I'm going to be doing on that note is I will give a formula sheet at the beginning of uh, the semester that way, any formula you need, any equation you ever need to solve problems on tests and homeworks will be there. So you don't have to worry about memorization. Instead, what you're going to find is physics being a very, very wide-ranging field, lots of different topics, 
and lots of different questions that can be asked for those various topics. The only way to understand it well enough to be proficient is to learn the basics, the fundamental laws, understand them uh, by conceptualizing them. That is to say, if I ask a question like a cannonball is shot at an angle of 30 degrees at 20 meters per second, how far will it go? What's its maximum height? You should be able to listen to the question or read the question and picture what would happen in real life in your mind. Obviously, we all have experience with the real life. We see things happen all the time. And the kinds of questions you'll get in this class are pretty much going to be conceptual in that way. You understand the commonsensical aspects of how the systems work. And by understanding that and focusing on that, you will be able to work your way through how to solve the various problems. So do not come into the class or into physics itself thinking, well, if I memorize the equations, I'll be able to solve any problem, because that's not true. What is true is if you understand the fundamental laws and you use uh, and you understand things conceptually and you use a little common sense, then any question that's asked of you, you will be able to solve eventually. You may have to work your way through it. You may not remember which equation I should use, but by using your conceptual knowledge, you'll be able to figure out eventually, uh, in order to get this, I need to use this equation. And in order to use this equation, I need this piece of information, and so on. You will see, obviously, as the semester progresses, how this works. But suffice it to say this, the only way you're going to get good at physics in general is to work a lot of practice problems. You cannot read the chapter and just think you're going to know everything because you read the chapter and you understand the words. You can't watch me do a couple of example problems and think you're going to understand how to do them yourself. You have to sit down with a blank sheet of paper and work the problems yourself. There are going to be a lot of problems that you get that you may not know how to solve them at first. You may start solving a problem one way and you can't get an answer and you may have to start over using a different method. This is all normal in physics. But if you practice and practice and practice, eventually when you get your test questions, you would have seen questions that are similar or you kind of have a sense of how you should go about solving things. If you don't do the practice ahead of time, then when you get a test problem and it's timed and there's a deadline, then you may waste a lot of time going down a route that you think is correct but is actually not correct. So I implore you, take the time to solve any problems I post. Uh, I will be posting a lot of practice problems. I'll be posting some homework problems. Um, some of that will be to turn in for a grade. Some will be just purely for your own practice. I can promise you this. If you do all the practice problems that I post, when you get your test, there should be nothing on the test that you don't know how to do. You should be able to do anything. So, that's my first big word of advice. Practice the problems that I give you in class, even the problems I solve myself later on. Start with a blank sheet of paper and see if you can reproduce what I did. Now, how will this class work? Well, uh, I will be posting video lectures just like this. Uh, this is an iPad app I'm using. It allows me to write like a whiteboard and it records my voice. So... I have found this is the most helpful way, the closest to being in class as possible without it being live, because it allows me to do what I need to do, which is to write, solve problems in front of you, and explain my thought process about how I'm doing it. I will be available to do uh, Zoom meetings every once in a while. Uh, if we all want to get together as a class to, uh, for, to, for you to ask questions of me, uh, if there's anything you don't understand. But for the most part, anything that's going to be for this class, I will post on Canvas. 
the lectures will be posted like this, kind of shorter videos. They're not going to be hour-long videos or anything like that. But I will be posting videos for every topic we do, and I'll be posting videos that are just practice problems. Uh, it is my experience that students want to see as many problems worked out for them as possible. And in fact, that's how I learned when I was a student. I learned best when I didn't so much demand that I take notes and write every word the professor said, but rather I would watch what the professor did, listen to how he or she explains the thought process behind solving the problems, and then I'd go home and do my homework problems or practice problems myself, trying to implement the ideas that they gave us in class. So that's what I'm going to do, as I said. I will do not just a theory type lecture, but also a, a video lecture where I solve problems for you. And I'll do my best to explain why I'm choosing the equation I'm choosing, how I'm implementing the numbers, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I will also be posting, uh, as I said, practice problems. Um, I create the problems myself. I don't take them from the textbook. I don't look up online. I make my own problems. So uh, there's a lot of resources out on the internet where you can find solutions to problems and all that kind of stuff. If you're looking to do a career in physics or engineering, Trust me, you don't want to get in the habit of using these uh, solutions manuals and sites like Chegg and so forth as a crutch. There's, I find no problem when you're completely stuck and you have no one to talk to, no one to try to get more information from, then you use a place like that to try to figure out what the next step in solving the problem is. But if you start to get into the habit of just copying what these sites are doing, then you're going to dig yourself a deep hole that you're never going to get out of. You're, if this is the career path you've chosen, you have to work your way through these problems so that you'll be good, you'll understand how these things work, and when you get to serious problems in your career, people can trust that you understand how to solve them yourself. Because that's eventually what you're going to be asked to do. You're going to be asked to solve problems no one else has ever solved before. And if you're completely used to relying on everybody else solving the problems for you and you just changing the numbers, then you're going to reach a point where you can't go any further. So, I will be posting practice problems for you to work out. If any of them are to be done for homework, I will let you know, okay, from these practice problems, do this one and this one to turn in by such and such date. Um, I will also post the solutions to all the practice problems. So I'll post the problems first, give you a few days to work on them yourself, try them out, try as much as you can. Then after a few days, I'll post full solutions so that you could see, are you doing them right? Or if you're getting stuck on some, uh, how I went about solving them. Uh, exams, we will have exams. I believe, uh, we're probably going to have two exams over the course of the semester uh, and the final. Um, so let me talk about the grading. The system of grading, I'm going to have uh, two exams. Exam one, exam two, and a final exam. They're all equally weighted, 20% of your grade. The final will be cumulative, but the other two exams aren't. Now, when I say that, in physics it's kind of funny, there's no such thing as not cumulative, because for the most part, more advanced topics rely on the more basic topics. So, one of the first things we're going to do is talk about vectors and learn how to add and subtract vectors, how to multiply vectors, all sorts of stuff. Well, everything you do from then on relies on your knowledge of vectors. 
So while exam two won't have a section on how do I add vector A plus vector B, the fact that you have to be able to add vectors to solve any of the problems tests that. But the final exam is what we normally classically call um, cumulative. So it'll go from the very beginning to the end. Um, I will also have uh, what I'm going to call quizzes. Um, now for this, sometimes I'll post a quiz with actual problem. So maybe a problem from the previous chapter we did or the, or the previous class, what we went over. And it'll be a single problem. Hey, work this out. And um, this is mostly going to be used for attendance. I'm calling it the quiz grade. But I'm also going to, when I don't give a quiz, I'm going to post a discussion thread like I did with the welcome module where you just you know, kind of post your name, say, okay, I'm here, or, you know, I'm watching what's going on in Canvas, whatever the case may be. This allows me to keep track of the attendance. So this quiz grade is a combination of the quizzes I post and then the attendance discussion thread. So that benefits you as long as you check in when I ask you to check in, then you get a free 100 on that quiz. But for the days I do give a quiz, of course, uh, you're solving the, the problem and turning it in counts as me let, uh, knowing you were there. That's also going to be 20%. And then lastly, assignments. And so this is like homework. Let's say that's going to be 20%. So when I post practice problems, if there's any I want you to turn in for homework, uh, those will count under the homework uh, section. And that's how your grade will be determined. Uh, just so you know, at the end of the semester, if you want to know what your grade is, there's a very easy way of determining it from this information. Basically, what you do is whatever your grade is from exam one, so exam one's grade, let's say it's an 80, multiply that by 0.2 because it's worth 20%, then plus whatever your grade for exam two was times 0.2, plus whatever your grade for the final is going to be, you know, this is so you can try to determine what you need to have, times 0.2 plus whatever your grade is for the quizzes, the average quiz grade, times 0.2, plus whatever your grade is for the homework, times 0.2, and you add all those things together, that's going to be your final average. So if you want to know how I'm going to determine your grade, this is how I would do it. So say, for instance, you have a 80 on test 1, so 80 times 0.2, and then you made a 92 on test 2, uh, you don't know what your final is yet, but you want to figure out what you need, so let's leave that blank. The quizzes, let's say you have a 90 on your quiz grade. And then homeworks, let's say you have uh, 85. Then you would add all this together, and you're going to get some number. And you say, okay, what do I want my final grade to be? Let's say I want my final grade to be a 90, because that's the lowest A. Then I say, okay, well, what's this uh, number here? Well, let's say that's uh, 70. So if I want to get a 90, that means I need 20 extra points. So I look, I say, okay, the final, final's worth 20%. So if I want to get 20 points, I need 100 on the final to get a 90. Let's say I wanted to get an 85 instead, then I need 15 points then that would mean I'd need a 75 on the final, and so forth. So, as we get closer to the end, if you're curious about your grade, this is basically how you can figure out what your grade is and what you may need to make on a final to get such and such a final grade, and so forth. All right, let's see. The topics we're going to be going over, uh, well, we'll start with a math review. Uh, and I do this for every physics class I teach, whether it's basic physics or more advanced senior level physics. I always start with a math review because I've found the biggest hindrance every student has when taking physics is their math skills. Uh, either 
it's been a long time since they've had to use some of this math or they're not very comfortable with it or they they feel they didn't have a good teacher in high school or college or whatever whatever the case is I'm gonna do my best for the first week or two to do nothing but talk about the mathematics that's involved in all the topics we're gonna be discussing so the very first thing I'm gonna post once this is uploaded is going to be information about mathematics what you'll need for this particular class is algebra and trig so algebra of course that's so you can actually solve the equations if you have an equation that looks uh, something like vf squared is v naught squared plus 2ax so this is going to be a kinematics equation this is final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the distance and let's say uh, we're working a problem this is the equation we have to use and what we'd like to do is solve for the acceleration well you have to be able to take this equation and manipulate it algebraically to solve for a and that's all algebra is so if I were to do it of course I'd first bring over the v naught squared so I'd get vf squared minus v naught squared equals 2 times a times x then I want to get a by itself so I would divide everything by 2x and so I'm left with a is equal to vf squared minus v naught squared over 2x and then I would just take whatever numbers are given in the problem for all these pieces of information here and I'd have my answer for a so that's algebra you have to be good at algebra because you're going to be given a bunch of equations but just because the equation says vf squared equals blah 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 that doesn't mean you're solving for vf in this case we were solving for a so you have to be able to manipulate the equation to get the thing you want and that's what algebra is all about we also need trig now with trigonometry uh, when you took that in high school or here at Dillard or wherever there's a whole lot to trigonometry we're not going to use all of it we're going to be using a very small subset of what you learn in trig and that has to do with sine cosine and tangent and the Pythagorean theorem that's basically all you need we're not going to be using all the half angle formula double angle formula or any of those fancy things we just need to be able to look at a triangle say this is our right triangle and uh, if we have this is X this is Y call this R and this is theta you should be able to look at this triangle and given some of this information can you solve for theta or can you solve for y or things like this and that's making use of sine cosine and tangent obviously if you don't remember how to do it right now don't worry that's my job to try to uh, review the information for you so that you can become comfortable again with it but these two big pieces of math that's going to be critical for the rest of your physics career or engineering career you have to be able to be good at these two things eventually you'll get into calculus and there's going to be parts of calculus you need to know for physics and engineering but for now you don't need calculus we're going to be doing purely algebraically and using trigonometry and we're going to rely heavily on both so we're going to have to practice a lot especially if you're not comfortable right now but believe me the secret I have found to the math that I've learned over the years is I've learned way more math in my physics courses than I ever did in a math course and the reason is because in math you learn the rules and you learn how to solve problems but it's all abstract they're just equations that you have to solve and you get an answer but it doesn't mean anything to you in physics these equations that you're going to be solving have a physical meaning they they discuss a, a system they model a cannonball being shot or uh, a plane flying through the air or water flowing through a pipe and all sorts of things they mean something physically and so 
once you get a grasp physically of what the equations represent, it's easier to understand why you manipulate things the way you do. So uh, that's going to be the first thing we do. We're going to do a math review first. Once that's done, then we're going to discuss vectors. And this is the most critical thing you will learn in physics. Because almost every single thing you ever do in physics and engineering involves vectors. So the faster you learn vectors, the better off you're going to be. People, when they take general physics, uh, which is going to be next year's courses, they have trouble with it because they don't understand vectors very well. Once the vectors click in your head, then the rest of it falls into place. But if you don't understand vectors, you're going to have a very hard time. So I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure we understand vectors now so that when you get into the next level of physics, you're prepared and you're actually a little ahead of the game. Then that, once that's done, we'll start into the actual physics stuff. And so we'll discuss things like kinematics, which is, you know, basic mechanics. You throw a rock off a cliff, how far will it go? How long will it take to hit the ground? These types of things. Um, forces. So Isaac Newton and his laws of mechanics that deals with forces. Energy. Uh, we'll deal with uh, some of the second semester physics type courses, which is electricity. Uh, we'll do fluids a little bit, and we'll do optics. And I think for the most part, these topics will be a good overview of uh, the large number of topics that are in physics, but it'll basically prepare you for next year. You're going to go through these topics all over again next year, but in a little more detail. So if you understand them now in this class, then when next year comes, you'll remember all of this stuff. It'll come back to you fairly quickly, and it'll make the course a lot easier for you. But like I said, for each of these topics, I'll be uploading a video lecture talking about the theory, uh, how to go about thinking about the problems, and then a separate video where I do a few practice problems explaining how I solve these particular problems. Then I'll also post practice problems for you to solve on Canvas. So those will be for your own study, some of which I may require to turn in for homework, uh, but the majority of which are just for your own use. Um, every once in a while we'll have a quiz. If we don't have a quiz, then I'll be asking you to just post on a discussion thread so I will have your attendance marked down uh, for the records. And that's how the class is going to shape up. We will not have any what they call synchronous classes, so I'm not going to set up um, you know, daily or weekly Zoom meetings where we all have to meet at 9 a.m. for the class. Everything's done online. Everything's done with these recordings. But as I said, if you need to meet, first of all, email me. And a lot of times we can resolve questions and stuff by email. Even if it's a matter of, you know, take a picture of the problem you're working on where you're stuck. I'll solve something, send a picture back. But if we have to do it live, and I can always set up a Zoom meeting, uh, a time and day that's appropriate for both, and, uh, and figure out uh, what's going on. But at the end of the day, the most important thing for you to, to consider for this semester is practice as many problems as possible. If you want to work together, so if you know some of the other students in the course, if you all want to do Zoom meetings together, practice the practice problems together, talk your way through it, that's a very good idea because a lot of times um, you may think you understand a problem because you got it right, but when someone asks a question about it that maybe you didn't consider, then it'll expose a part of the problem you didn't really think about. So it's a good idea if you have the ability to 
to meet with others, discuss with others how you're solving these problems. Because the better you are at solving problems that you haven't seen before, the better off you're going to be on the test. Because there are thousands of physics problems I have the ability to ask, but I won't be able to show you a thousand physics problems beforehand. So there's a possibility that on a test, you'll get a question that we never solved in class. Your ability to solve it, you'll have. It'll be a problem on the topics we discussed, but it may just be a slightly different version of the question. I won't trick you. I won't put these problems at how in the world would I ever understand how to solve it. I'm not going to do anything like that. There's no reason to. But I do want you to be able to think your way through this course because that is the biggest part of physics and why physics is taught to students who aren't going to go into physics or engineering. It helps you learn about critical thinking. Uh, I, a lot of my pre-med majors ask me all the time, why in the world do I have to take physics? Well, it's not because you need to know how far a cannonball is going to go. It, it doesn't matter to a, a medical doctor. But what does matter is to build the part of your brain that allows you to think your way through a problem. To diagnose a problem, someone comes in, lets you know, this is what's going on, this is my problem. You should be able to listen to the problem, understand what's going on, take the appropriate pieces of information away from the problem that's necessary to solve it, understand all the tools that are at your disposal, equations and so forth, which are the ones you should use, which are the ones you can't use, and then actually use those tools to solve the problem. So this skill is not just for physics and engineering. Everybody needs these skills. But physics is one of the best ways of teaching that skill. So if you think about this course in that light, it may make things a little easier for you when you get stuck on a problem or something uh, you don't uh, understand at first and you're trying to work your way through it. That's the point of the problem itself. Can you work your way through something you haven't seen before and use all the knowledge that you have to build your own solution? Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have for you. As I said, my email, drossmanith at diller.edu. Um, I also have my cell phone and everything on the syllabus. Syllabus should be posted to Canvas. Um, as I said, everything will be posted on Canvas. When I do post things, I'll generally send an email to let you know. But keep checking Canvas at least once a day. Uh, check, make sure I'm not, I didn't post a quiz or I didn't post a new assignment or something like that. Keep up with it. If you're having troubles, email me, let me know. I'll be happy to work with you as much as possible. And I think uh, things will work themselves out pretty well. Anyway, I look forward to the rest of the semester.